Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Discover New Music podcast from us at Full Pelt Music. Shortly, we'll be joined by Bex to discuss her latest single, Sunday, which we recently featured over on our Discover New Music playlist on Spotify. But before then, the usual reminders from myself. If you would, please do follow Full Pelt on social media. We're on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And again, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, whatever you're watching or listening. Massive welcome to Bex to the uh, Discover New Music podcast. How are you this evening? Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Just been to the gym, so I've got a little bit of a high. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm getting a bit past the gym these days, unfortunately, so I can't quite remember what that high is like. But uh, yeah, it must be good. So uh, Back to it. Yeah, I really do need to get back to it. Uh, I am literally sat uh, next to a treadmill that hasn't been plugged in for about, uh, I'd say, a good eight or nine months at this point so <laughs> yeah do your podcast on it like a Some... podcast. Walk your... talk. yeah someone suggested that to me the other day actually maybe it's something i'll look at maybe but uh, i think it, i might end up embarrassing myself if if i'm honest um but uh <laughs> well i have a habit of falling over when i go for a run to be honest it wouldn't be the first time so um yeah probably best uh best avoiding that because uh obviously yeah uh, wouldn't want to take the attention away from the guests because obviously um, so excited to have you on um, you know you've just put out Sunday your uh, latest single so we are going to talk about it obviously in just a moment but before then uh, it's the Discover New Music podcast so it's for hopefully people to discover some new music and we always because of that start off with the same segment it's called the origin story now Often I'm talking to, you know, um, a band uh, and obviously yeah, origin story. How did you guys get together, et cetera, et cetera. I always love when I'm talking to you know, an individual artist because, you know, the origin story, we could get quite deep on it realistically, couldn't we? But um, for, for you, Bex, just, you know, how did it get to the point where you, you decided, you know, that this is what you wanted to do? And, and obviously you wanted to put out music as as Bex. You know, uh, what is the origin story for, for Bex? Um. I think like I when I went to college I studied music and I was I was always in bands and I was in loads of bands and do you know something just didn't feel right and like I didn't didn't really love having like to include everybody's opinion and so I, I sort of realised that I just needed to do it myself because also when you're in a band like you're only gonna be as good as your weakest link so I think I just saw that and thought like I just want to do everything myself and I'm I'm quite a control freak so I, I just sort of like decided I was like I just need to like write the songs learn bass like learn how to program drums and just figure out how to do it myself so that was literally it like it was just like a I don't want anyone else's opinion let's do it <laughs> Yeah, I can absolutely uh, understand that for sure. It's, it's quite often good to be a, a control freak, especially in the creative world, um, because you know you know that you uh, you believe in what you're putting out there. So yeah, absolutely, uh, really, really important. So uh, so yeah, obviously getting back in it then. Uh, obviously, you know uh, the result of you know um, where we are is is the latest release Sunday, um, which. Uh, I've been listening to it again, obviously, just before speaking to you. Now, I obviously listened to it when it came out and put it on the playlist. And listening to it again now just reminds me of just how damn catchy the song is. You know, especially the chorus is one of them choruses. Uh, I'm probably going to be, you know, singing it in my head for you know the rest of the, the rest of the evening. It is yeah. such a good song. Um, uh, obviously, we always ask about the songs we put on the playlist, so we, we like to delve into them a little bit and just ask, you know, what are the themes behind? the song um and how did you go about creating it um so sunday was uh originally called sit down cow um and i wrote it with like um me my producer sam kramer uh my bassist josh and then Stephen Battelle and will vaughan we're just like a little group um they also wrote oh wait it hasn't come out never mind <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um no, so we yeah, we write like quite a lot of my songs together. Um and uh it was like chucking it down that day. 
and when we got to the studio because we we only see each other like once every two months and we always sort of start the day with something really random like when we got to the studio we were talking about the rain and I was like guys you know that like before it rains cows sit down to keep their patch of grass warm uh not warm dry and they were like whoa someone told me that the other day and I was like that's so weird and then we just started looking at pictures of cows and the song was actually originally about like our love for cows and then you you know you like write a song and then like a few months passes and you have to like rewrite it fix it make it actually like listenable to other people so then I was like I actually need to think of a new meaning for the song so like, I can't release a song that's like this is my love for cows <laughs> cows are so clever um yeah and then like the nursery rhyme bit just sort of like came on the day um just literally because it was raining and we were like oh, I wish it would stop raining um yeah and then we just formed like merged the cow love into our like love and hate that we have with like social media and you know like being an artist that you have to be like a social media person as well and like you don't really want to be that but you have no choice and like how wrong like wrongly social media perceives you and like I think I was like also a bit of the problem because only in the last like week have I started like properly like properly posting without wearing any makeup before it like be a little snippet of me and I might not have any makeup on but like literally this week I was like why am I putting on makeup just to, like film a video to post because I, I don't I get dressed every day but I don't wear makeup every day I wear makeup when I play a show and like that's mm. it so it's just sort of like about how like wrong everything can be perceived because like no no one looks like that all the time no one's posing all the time and and no one's life is like full of that much love and everything and and also like the love you receive on social media is so surface level it's it's always like wow you look so pretty wow you look so great wow you're playing so good like it's very like surface level it doesn't really get much deeper than that and yeah so the song sort of like went from being about loving cows like loving yourself really yeah but to be fair both really important messages cows are great and uh cows yeah are important. they're an Ab- important part of the world they absolutely are and yeah it's absolutely important obviously to to love yourself and i couldn't agree more obviously um like you say with social media becoming so prevalent it, it is obviously uh yeah you you just see like this idealistic like life that people live but actually it's just yeah. a you know it's it's a snapshot or it's you know uh, manufactured you know really life isn't that great and you know it it is uh yeah definitely something that uh, we all need to to factor in so yeah no definitely a a, a great message for the song it it is that great like i i do believe that a lot of people aren't lying in their pictures like it is that great but that was only like an hour of their day doesn't exactly was that great so when I post, I'm like, oh, this gig was great. Like, it was so good. Like, I didn't show everyone us sitting on the train for four hours because we got stuck or, like, <laughs> lugging our gear across London or, like, getting super nervous beforehand and not wanting to do it. Like, I literally showed the one hour that was really, really, really good. Yeah, which is, again, you know, an equally important thing because you have to, you know, where life is full of challenges and, and hurdles and, you know, it is far from perfect, you know, there are great moments perfect moments happening every single day we have to yeah i think it's a balance isn't it it's a balance of celebrating the the, the great things without um you know uh forgetting that actually you know life is uh is, is yeah is, is a is a challenge really so uh no definitely uh and uh, i love how the song formed as well bex uh I, you know it always interests me you know how you know a concept becomes you know a rel- reality in a finished piece and obviously yeah the sort of journey from the cow song as, as I'm going to term it to obviously you know where it come and, and yeah as you say on the day you know it just happened to be rain and just happened that you sort of come out with a nursery rhyme sort of uh lyrics and obviously put them in there it is just funny how the world works some some yeah. ways you know it definitely works in mysterious ways so uh yeah absolutely listeners obviously need to go and check it out listen to it either on our um, playlist or of course you know across all the usual streaming platforms um go and obviously uh, follow bex on there and listen to that track but i want to push them uh, directly to one particular place right now uh, regular listeners will know how much of a geek i am when it comes to music videos 
Um, so listeners definitely need to go on YouTube and uh, check out the video for uh, for Sunday because uh, I think it fits the song really well and, and does a lot in the period of time just to obviously represent you as, as an artist and give you give the listener a bit more of a, a glimpse into you really I think that's what music videos do and it is a real lost art and you've sort of managed to do it really well uh, not just with that video actually uh, but a number of videos that I was just watching a few minutes ago actually and going oh wow yeah brilliant because the amount of times especially on this podcast um, we have two podcasts uh, and this one obviously focuses on sort of you know, fresh, fresh talent coming through and obviously pushing new music. And uh, obviously a lot of newer bands don't really bother with music videos. Um, you know, the budget's not there for it and, you know, the, the maybe a lack of interest, but you've obviously put a lot of effort into all your videos. So specifically with Sunday, um, how did you come up with the concept for the video and obviously how did you put it into practice? Um, so we don't, we don't have any budget. Like I'm fully self-funded. Um... And like, it was quite expensive to get your tracks like mixed and mastered and all that jazz. So that's where I save up and put my money there. Um, so with the uh, music video, like I always have like these really wild ideas, but we do have to like tone it down because like we have an iPhone to film it on at the end of the day. And like we have these two little stick lights that I got for 20 quid and that's it. Um, yeah, Sunday, literally the only thing we spent money on was ice cream and the ice cream glasses because I didn't have any. But that was literally it. Everything else was just like things that we already had or things that I made. Um, and like the like burnt out car was literally just like a fluke. We were just we were driving to go out like me and my two mates. We were literally on our way to go. I don't think to the pub or something. So we had to drive through the forest and there was just a burnt out car and we had the lights in the boot and we were like, should we film should we film the, <laughs> me performing on the car? And so we did. And then like the little like bit in the barn is just like a barn, someone's barn that we know. So we were allowed to go in there. And then Josh, like my bassist films everything. Um, and my mum's got a set of like drums downstairs that we can use to pretend to drum on like you should have heard the actual thing it was not drumming it was just like <laughs> doom, doom, doom. um but yeah the concept sort of was just like i don't know i feel like it didn't really have like a much of a story other than just like this is a fun song and like we have no money so we're just gonna have fun singing the song in different locations with different outfits on um because like at the end of the day like because social media is, like, so fake, like, but it's not fake, but it is fake, but it's, like, really confusing, like, you do need to, like, I don't know, I just wanted to be, like, a bit more real, like, I, uh, there wasn't, there wasn't, like, a big story behind the song, it was pretty straight to the point, so we were, like, why don't we just find some cool places, sing and dance and perform and mess about a bit with some lights and then just mash it all together. Because like it, it was it's not really a storytelling song, I don't think. So it just felt wrong to kind of try and tell a story. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think I could have got any cows involved. Might be animal cruelty. <laughs> yeah, may may well. Uh, yeah, perhaps a missed trick there. Yeah, but definitely. Um. Uh. Yeah, I think the realest thing that stood out from the video is just how much fun you were having with it. So it obviously, yeah, it did translate really, really well. And I agree, probably not. Uh, a sort of story uh, song for for a video and uh, um, I love what you, you did with it because it just showcases what I say so many times on this podcast is actually you know music videos like I said help help connect you know for, for me growing up with music tv obviously MTV Kerrang etc watching it religiously you know before and after school it helped me form more of a bond with certain artists because I you know I, I'd see their look and I think wow I want to look like that that's that's the, the, my sort of scene and you can actually create some fantastic visuals that don't really cost a lot, you know, and, yeah. and so yeah. you've oh, yeah, absolutely, you've done it so well with, with the video for Sunday. So obviously kudos for that. Um, really well done. Listeners definitely need to get, go and check it out. And uh, before we move off Sunday and onto some other uh, pieces, I just, I wanted to ask, uh, it popped in my head earlier, so I was going to ask it. Just a cheesy question. If you're ordering a Sunday, what flavour ice cream would you go for, Bex? You know what? When Sunday came out, 
I made my entire family go get Sundays with me. <laughs> and I, I got um strawberry cheesecake. Ooh. But nice. You, normally I'd go for, for biscoff. Oh. But I did I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I think I just wanted like something fruity. Yeah. Yeah, I do love a, a strawberry fra- flavoured like ice creams and milkshakes, mm. definitely, definitely. And yeah, or biscoff as well. Um mm. Yeah, I have a sweet tooth, so I can't really pick. Mint choc chip, I think, deserves a shout out, in, in my opinion, as well. But yeah. No, I, I hate mint. Like, that's <gasps> the worst part of the day. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can agree on the, the tooth the toothbrushing, maybe. But yeah, I, I do. Yeah, mint choc chip ice cream is, is a personal favourite. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, love it, love it, absolutely. Um, yeah, such a uh, fun song. Again, listeners definitely need to go and check it out. And they also need to go and check out your debut EP. So Scum, the name of the EP, came out in October. So about six six months ago now. Um, yeah. Obviously, yeah, debut... Yeah, time, yeah, absolutely flies. It is is, is, is mad. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously, debut EP. Uh, really big, of uh, important step for any artist to get a sort of... a chunk of songs out and a piece of art out there um a bit of a statement as well normally obviously a debut sort of release you know this this is who i am this is what i'm gonna do so obviously as we are six months beyond it i just wanted to ask you how you found obviously the reception to it over that period of time you know how how has it gone for you um i think it was definitely like the it was like a very necessary building block for me to get where i am now um I, I'm not like I, I do really like the songs on it but there's some of the songs on it I don't really like they don't do it for me anymore and they I and it, cause, like it's like because it, it came out like six months ago but to me like finished writing it like two years ago so it's been a long time and it's yeah some of the songs just don't they don't really like gel with me um but I think it was received really well because you sort of forget that like this is everyone's first time hearing it, whereas I've heard it for like two years, so it's it's really old to me. Um, but it was received like exactly how we wanted it to, like it it got so much like love and attention, and that was great. And like it really did like put a nice base down for me to build off of. Um, like it's nice for people to have actually like more than like two or three songs on Spotify to listen to. Um, even if like to me they're not not my favorite but like they were my favorite at one point otherwise I wouldn't have released yeah. them I wouldn't have been like we're gonna release these in a year but like yeah because now like the songs I release now I, I bet in like two years time I'll be like oh, why did I do that <laughs> yeah. yeah it was received like really well it, it was great yeah yeah, no, good to hear. And I mean that just demonstrates growth on on your part in my opinion. Obviously, you know you. It, you shouldn't be the same person you were two years ago you know it'd be, it'd be a shame if any of us were you know obviously that's always going to be a part of you absolutely yeah. but yeah we all, all grow as, as individuals and you know as a musician when you're putting out you know songs and, and art like that then it's only natural that obviously you'll gravitate towards something different and obviously Sunday uh, is a great first step to, to what follows from Scum um, I was just going to touch on and ask as well but I think you accidentally sort of gave it away a little bit i was gonna say i hope there is obviously some more music coming in the imminent future you probably can't say what just yet but i'm guessing fans can expect some i definitely we're filming a music video next week so yeah i'm I'm just like a constant releaser like i don't like the start of this year i was like i really want to release an album but like i don't know if that's for me i like to just like release like a little thing and then be like bye and then come back and be like here's the little thing again like I just like the consistency of it and like there's always like a little bit of excitement but I feel like when you release an album like you do have to sort of stop for a bit and let people listen to it obviously behind the scenes you're not stopping but I do like the constant like have this have this have this little bit of me but yeah definitely loads more coming this year yeah which is fantastic news for fans and yeah, obviously, I, I think I agree with you. Uh, obviously, there's a ro- romance around an album. Obviously, you know, I'm uh, of an age where, you know, I, I have this, you know, uh, great love of certain albums that I grew up listening to. And obviously, you know, it, it makes me, you know, um, just, yeah, you connect with uh, that that record. And obviously, you know, you'll always want to listen to it, et cetera, et cetera. But attention spans are so 
short these days because life is so fast these days that actually I, I think it's more effective for us who do put out you know single here ep here single here and obviously just keep feed the music in rather than i'm going to release an album now and then i'm not going to release anything new for another three years until i do like another album yeah because so. like my favorite band does that and i do get bored like i they'll be like my top band on like the spotify wrapped and then like the next year they're not even on it because like, i don't want to listen to the album anymore because i just rinsed it so much in that first year and then i'm like i'm fed up it now like give me something new yeah yeah absolutely um couldn't agree more and obviously the best place for listeners to stay up to date with everything coming out from you uh, as you touched on earlier is is social media it's such an important um part of being a musician these days which is as again you touched on a bit of a shame really because that's not why you know people make music to do social media yeah. but it just a necessary evil, I would call it. So I always give out the social handles because um, it always intrigues me because obviously they get so uh, ridiculous sometimes because, again, a band that formed 20 years ago wasn't forming on the basis of what social handles they could get. So, you know, um, it's very hard these days to get your actual band name as a social yeah. handle. I think you've done pretty well, Bex. So... Um, B.E.X. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. It saves me saying it. It will be flashing up on the screen on YouTube as we speak. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously Facebook and Twitter, Bex Bex Music, so a lot easier. And obviously links will be in the bio. So I always just push listeners, go and give obviously Bex a follow um, to stay up to date with everything that's going to be coming out. And there's obviously some more music coming. There's also uh, some shows coming up. Um, so You've just recently announced um, that you're going to be playing your biggest headline show, Omera in London. Uh, a great, great venue. Um, I really love it. It's just such a cool feel uh, in that in that venue. Um, oh, you you will absolutely love it. Yeah, it's it's a um, real under school uh, under underground uh, old school underground um, sort of feel to it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, November the 1st for listeners, uh, particularly in the London area, I suggest you get yourselves to the show and check it out. Um, for you, Bex, obviously, um, biggest headline show. You must be really, obviously, excited about it. Yeah, I kind of find it a bit nerve-wracking, because I'm like, what if no one shows up? But <laughs> that's kind of out of my hands now. Like, that's not my choice if people show up. So I've sort of been learning, like, this past year that's gone, that, like, you know what, if no one shows up, that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Like, you've just got to have fun and do your thing. And if there's 10 people there, that's going to be the best best show they've ever seen. So, yeah, I'm a, I am excited for it. It's going to be it's going to be really good. I don't care how many people are there. There can be two people there. It'll still be really good. <laughs> I'm sure it will, uh, it will fill out, absolutely. And uh, as you touched on, you've been playing a lot of live shows over the last sort of year or so. And you've also been, obviously, supporting um, some really, really good live bands. Now, I actually discovered you supporting uh, St Agnes um, uh, a few a few months ago. Although, again, time flies so so quickly. It might have been a year ago for all I know. But yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't that long ago. Um, and I, I know you recently supported the likes of Bob Villain as well at a show. And uh, obviously, you know, th there's a lot of people that you've sort of worked with there that are recognised as sort of uh, great sort of controllers of a crowd, you know, um, really engaging artists. Do you obviously, while playing with these bands, you know, look to sort of learn lessons from them and, and see what you can take from their shows? Oh, yeah, I quiz them. I'm yeah. like, how do you do this? How do you do this? And what about this? And because really, like, there's no, like, rule book for, like, that much information on how to be a musician nowadays or any days. Like, there never really was. And, like, the best way you're going to learn is, like, by asking people and, like, it can be as simple as, like, I don't know what percentage my manager is supposed to take. But someone who, like, knows that, like, they don't care answering. They'll just be like, oh, well, we give ours this. Because it's not, like, a personal question. It's just, like, a they had to find it out at some point, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I do, like, I ask a lot of questions. And sometimes, like, even if I know the answer, I'll ask it again to someone else just to see if the answers are different. Uh, like but yeah i think that's sort of the best thing you can do it's like it's like it's just you you do have to learn like how to do it and the only way to learn how to do it is from the people that are doing it at a higher level than you so yeah, yeah. I, I i do quiz them but i try not to do it too much i try not to be like can you tell me this and this and this and this and this and this and this but yeah yeah I, yeah I do, I do quiz them <laughs> 
No, absolutely. It's a fantastic attitude because the old saying goes, obviously, there's no such thing as a stupid question here. If you don't know the answer to something, you need to ask it, don't you? And obviously, who better to ask than people that are out there and have obviously lived that experience and gained that knowledge by doing it themselves. So, yeah, absolutely yeah. fantastic. And I'm sure there'll be another opportunity for you to do that at the uh, next question I'm going to ask. So my favourite festival, uh, one of, if not the, uh, is 2000 Trees. And uh, I see... It is such an incredible festival, and not only are you playing it this year, but you're playing the main stage this year. So, uh, I mean, what a fantastic opportunity! And, and again, you must be like so excited about that. I'm, I'm actually, I screamed when I found out. <laughs> so, my manager phoned me, and I was actually like, I'm screaming, and she was like, I had the same reaction. <laughs> but yeah, it's super exciting because last year we played the new stage, um, which was great, and then. Because 2000 Trees, they don't really like inviting the same bands back twice. So we we didn't even think we were going to play it. So then to find out we're playing the main stage was like great. It was really, really, really good. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I definitely encourage, again, having caught you myself yeah, recently, listeners, if you head into 2000 Trees, uh, get to that main stage and, ca and catch Bex. Like, you're not going to be disappointed by it. So absolutely do that. And uh um, along the uh, audience engagement piece, uh, I also just wanted to just touch on as well, because uh, I'm see seeing more and more artists that I speak to utilising uh, Patreon. Um, and I, I find it such an incredible tool for artists these days. We've said how the industry's adapted and evolved in certain ways during this podcast. And, you know, 20 years ago, uh, those bands I was watching on their music videos there was no way of me connecting with them individually you know especially if they were from a different country like america or somewhere like that you know just it, it felt, feels like you know they're just living a different life in a different world obviously patreon opens up artists and allows them to form communities with their fan bases so i think it's a fantastic tool and i just wanted to ask you as obviously a uh, a user of it you know what your thoughts of it are i think it's great it is hard to move people from social media where you can see absolutely everything for free to you now have to pay for it um so it, i do find it quite difficult to market and you know find reasons why people should do it because sometimes like we can talk to each other that's just not enough because like, i do answer like all my messages on instagram so we can talk for free as well um so i don't think people should have to pay to talk to me but like I do try and like offer different things like we can video call or like I'll teach you bass or like you also get something from it rather than you're just giving me money to see something that will go on Instagram two weeks later. Um, but it, it's super helpful to have that like regular income. And sometimes you find that people do want to support you financially just out, just, they just do. Like I, I, I'm I'm not financially in that position to do that for people but to be fair if I was I would like I wouldn't really want anything in return but it's really nice when you find that like people that literally just want to like they understand that being a musician is expensive and they literally just want to help and like there's all these benefits on Patreon and they're like no no I don't care like I'll just do the monthly payment and that's just crazy like but yeah it's, I definitely recommend people to like get on it and you know, get on as many like platforms where you can monetize because people aren't even paying for the music anymore. Yeah. So they've got to like they you've got to make them pay for something because like you can't do everything for free, especially when it costs so much to do. Yeah, uh, and and that is a key point as you actually just say because uh, often as a musician, it's not doing things for free. Like, oh, can you come and play this show? Well, it's not free for you to come and play a show. You need to pay to get there. You know, there's other expenses related to it. So it's not actually free. It's costing you money. So, you know, yeah. often even if you are getting paid, it's only reimbursing what you you sort of put out there anyway. So, um, yeah, the industry is so tough. And, you know, there's a lot of debates happening uh, as we speak around, for example, grassroots venues. Should they be supported by, you know, the arenas that are doing so well? You know, bigger artists, should they be, you know, a fund that supports, you know, new musicians coming through? Because it is so tough to break through in 2024. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. There's a great core of like um, music fans across the UK that, as you say, are willing to invest in artists that they believe in. And uh, a tool like Patreon allows them to do that. So, uh, yeah, great. Yeah. Whenever I see someone utilising it, it's fantastic. 
they like those people like the fans that will invest they they are actually the entire music industry because like no artist would be able to do it without the fans and definitely like if we all had loads of fans that only listened on spotify didn't buy any merch didn't come to shows you would there's no way you'd be able to do it so like the music industry is those fans that that invest and want want all your merch and they want to speak to you every day like that is the music industry it's like it's not all these like men and 50 year old men that do this and do that like great you can have that but even if you have no live agent no record label no no manager if you've still got the fans that want to invest in you and want to see you you're in the music industry like you've got more than anyone else yeah absolutely and more and more these days you're seeing artists do it themselves you know independently you know uh, a little bit of support here and there but they're yeah you know, um, sort of getting away from you need a label you need a major label to be able to to achieve any kind of success you are seeing bands being able to achieve it now through perseverance hard work and uh, yeah i guess a pinch of good luck in there as well um but yeah uh absolutely um yeah imperative and listeners obviously there'll be the links in the bio to all of this and i encourage you to support bex you know subscribe to patreon and obviously just follow her on social media everything you can do uh certainly certainly helps buy some merch as well there's obviously some fantastic uh bex merch that i noticed and some opportunities for custom made stuff um as well from yourself which looks fantastic so yeah encourage listeners to check it all out definitely yeah um so the last segment of the podcast uh, follows the live conversation we've kind of had it's the same on every podcast uh, i'm a setlist geek as well as a music video geek and a geek in many other ways um i love set lists um i love to see what artists are playing and how they're structuring their set lists and trying new things trying different things so um the simple question that we ask uh, is very simple it is literally just how much importance do you place into the structure of your set lists and have you got any rules that you tend to follow um really like we just sort of because i don't play bass in every song so we just make sure it's two on two off two on two off and like there's no like really quick changeovers where i need to like put a bass on take a bass off and then um like a lot of our songs like are in drop c sharp but a lot of them are in standard so then we have to arrange it to make sure that uh josh has like the right bass on at the right time um and then we always put like the newest song last and we always open with filthy but and slave to the grind is always in the middle but other than that yeah it's just really like convenience of like putting bases on swapping bases over and taking bases off yeah which is an incredibly important aspect of uh, a set list structure for sure and um, I'm intrigued. You know, you, you say you always put the newer song uh, last. Uh, what's the motivation for doing that? Um, I feel like before the last song, like, people always remember the last song because it's the last thing they heard. And also, you can you can talk and tell them, like, this song's coming out or this song just came out and they'll remember it. Whereas if you say that right at the start and then play for, like, 30 minutes or an hour, they're going to have forgotten so it's it's literally just to like make sure people remember because they'll they'll be like oh yeah the last one's the one that's coming out it'll be like the most recent thing in their head i don't know if that's true mm. that's just like the way i see it it's uh there's some really good logic actually and the first time i've I've uh, heard an artist sort of say that which is why i ask because obviously a lot, yeah, a lot of uh musicians it's just standard isn't it let's put the biggest well-known song the yeah, biggest hit last you know and just finish yeah. on that but actually it's kind of the opposite now we're going to play a song that potentially um yeah no no one really knows uh so but yeah it will it is you know yeah. and again uh i believe sunday was the last song when I, I caught you supporting uh st agnes again with it being such an earworm you you know you're walking away from the venue and that's like the one that's going to be stuck in your head isn't it so it's yeah sound logic definitely and uh no, uh, you definitely passed the test on on settler science, and it's been a, <laughs> been a really great uh, opportunity to, to sit and talk through all of this with you. I say I, I see a big, big future for for yourself um, coming up, and listeners need to get on board now and do everything we've said. You know, check out the video, check out the song, follow you on social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that is my kind of final message to the listeners. But I always just throw the final, final message uh, over to the guests. So, um, Bex, what would be your final message for the listeners today? 
honestly just like support small bands where you can and if you can't support them financially just follow them or listen to their music yeah just support people and spread love don't don't be a hater don't be a hater perfect final message absolutely thank you so much for joining me on the podcast bex thanks for having me well thank you everyone for listening i really do hope you enjoyed that chat there with bex do make sure you check out her latest single sunday over on our discover new music playlist on spotify and of course follow bex across social media to stay up to date with everything coming from her you can also stay up to date with Full Pelt on social media. We're on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And finally, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, whatever you're watching or listening, because we'll be back very soon with another episode of the Discover New Music Podcast. <laughs>